Hello everyone, back to shooting into today's uh, third video. We're going to have a look at whether the next 10 to 14 days for today's third video, day 10, will take us to the 21st of January. And we'll be able to extend out beyond that. We have GFS and ECM ensembles because they run around a couple of weeks. Have a look at CFS V2 at the end of the video for the next four weeks, which will get us um, well into February. So I shall get on that for you in a second. Just say the first video is saying was our 7 a.m. upload. Uh, well, actually recorded at 6 a.m. Um, and uh, also uh, the EC30 day, uh, look out for the UK and the rest of Europe as well. We do send out weeks five and six data with that also. Please like, share, subscribe on the videos. Thank you so much, everybody. Uh, for doing that, right, so I'm searching temperatures. So CT is currently uh, stable at 6.2, which is 2.7 degrees uh, above average. So it's stabilised. Of course, we have that very, very warm New Year's Day. And then since then, it's generally been... Uh, dropping away, so uh, it's uh, sort of stabilised in low sixes, it'll hover around there for the next day or so, and then through the middle and second half this week, it will start to uh, drop again down into the fives. The um, reason that's going to happen is that high pressure is going to set up over, well it's setting up today really, uh, and it will bring uh, some cold nights, so these are basically temperature forecast from uh, UKV. So we've got a relatively mild uh, weather out. We've got a relatively mild day today for the south, but it's a little bit cooler in the north. That cooler air will be edging southwards. We see that tonight we're going to get our first frost across uh, much of England and Wales with temperatures going just a little bit below. It's not going to be too cold tonight, but it will be a little bit frosty across uh, much of England and Wales. Scotland going milder, uh, you'll notice. And then into uh, tomorrow, temperatures about average, but another widespread frost will develop tomorrow night across many parts of England and Wales, that one a little bit harsher, especially for more southern areas. And then another even colder night on uh, Thursday night with, again, a very substantial frost. Temperatures going, uh, you know, down to minus three, minus four, minus five there. Uh, in, um, but in rural areas, you can expect temperatures to be colder than that. Actually, notice Scott remains frostry. And then on Friday night, there will be another widespread and, and pretty uh, harsh and, and harsh frost, you know. Uh, and again, temperatures down to minus four. Uh, on the forecast, but in rural areas like to be colder than that, possibly down to minus six or minus seven, I would have thought, through some parts of England and Wales. So with those frosty nights comes, run of several frosty nights, that brings the CT down even further, and uh, that will see it falling into the fives, uh, you know, uh, over the next few days quite nicely. Not quite so cold on Saturday night into Sunday, frost a little bit more patchy of that then, but even so, quite a chilly night to come. So uh, we can expect this to fall, uh, you know, stabilised, stable at the moment, we can expect this to fall through the middle of the second half week into weekend, down into the fives, possibly even into the fours, we'll have to see how cold these nights uh, get, but uh, yeah, you know, uh, we, we continue to unravel that very, very warm uh, New Year's Day that we had. Uh, right, these are GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles. Let's go to week seven at least. Eh? Red lines, 30 year upper air temperature average leads. Uh, we're close to average at the moment. A little bit above. Going to go, you know, uh, see a fall uh, over the next few hours. Um, then we go quite mild with the upper air temperature. But remember, that's not going to be realised on the surface. Not for England and Wales, anyway. We'll have those widespread frosts. So a proper inversion going on where it's mild a lot but cold on the surface, and then after that, just quite close to average, uh, really, as we go through the second half of January. Now, that's a midnight set, however. That's a midnight GFS uh, set, but just have a very quick look at the 6Z, see what's happened on the very latest uh, GFS run, and there it is. Quite a significant um, swing to cold there from the uh, GFS 6Z. I don't know whether this will be sustained for the 12Z set, but quite clearly, um, most GFS ensemble members are, uh, a majority of them anyway, are going, uh, you know, for quite a potent cold snap down to minus 10 and 850 HPA around the 17th, 18th of January. All of a sudden, the GFS ensembles have shifted um, towards, like, a, a northerly outbreak uh, as we go into just beyond middle part of the month. Doesn't last all that long. Members are recovering back close to average, although um, the uh, operational GFS run, which is the thick green line, 6 that operational run, that stays quite cold throughout, and it has got the GFS control run uh, with it as well. So I think the GFS ensembles from a 6 Z set has shifted quite dramatically uh, towards cold. Um, whether that will be sustained for <laughs> the 12Z set, uh, we shall see. It remains to be seen, doesn't it? But, um, but yeah, dramatic developments there from the midnight GFS uh, ensembles to V6Z 
GFS ensembles. Precipitation wise, loads of dry weather to come. And even into the second half of January, January, where it does get a little bit more unsettled. Even then, you know, there's plenty of precipitation spikes. Um, or there's not that many precipitation spikes, I should say, uh, really. So, so a relatively dry sort of week or two, certainly a week to 10 days to come. Uh, in terms of sea level pressure, so that's going to be uh, very high over the next few days at around 1,040 millibars. And then staying pretty high, really, uh, somewhere around 1,020 to 1,030 millibars. In terms of two metre temperatures, we look like that. So, uh, you know, it's not overly mild over the next few days. Quite cool, actually, a bit of a cool down. Certainly, chance of some frosty nights. And then, particularly this period here, around like the 17th to the 19th or 20th of uh, January, that's when we can get quite a potent cold snap for the temperatures to lift up and go back, you know, closer uh, closer to average. As far as snow row is concerned, so not that much showing up, uh, really, although there are some snow spikes, full level of them around there. Again, that's with the cold normally snap from the 17th, 19th January. And then again, perhaps a little bit more towards the end of the month, but that is very, very long way out and extended range. Temperature anomalies on the 11th to 19th of January are uh, near to a little bit above average. That's based on the midnight GFS run, though. If that was based on the 6th then, I suspect that would look quite a bit cold now. I think I'm able to follow this. Uh, it is a little bit complicated. Uh, the precipitation anomalies on the 11th to the 19th of January, they are substantially drier than normal. Latest wind from out from Earth, North School Dark Nature's high pressure is, is building in, and we're sending the west south westerlies away to our north and west as our high pressure takes over. Right, let's start going go through some chart data. Then this is how the GFS, uh, this is how the uh, UK Met Euro is looking for midnight on Friday. High pressure is in control. It's a warm ridge, but remember there will be an inversion taking place, particularly for England and Wales, bringing overnight frost and potentially quite a lot of fog. And as we head up towards uh, the end of the UK Euro the run, which gets to the 18th of December, a high pressure still sitting over the top of the country, mainly dry, but again, with ongoing threat of frost and fog. This is how Icon is looking again, high pressure, uh, ruling the roost over the next few days, bringing frost and fog, positioning out to our west a little bit over the weekend, that brings some slightly milder air in over top and probably quite a lot of cloud as well, and then back in comes that high pressure through the early part of next week, probably bringing a return of overnight frost, especially to more southern and western areas. GFS midnight run again with high pressure dominating the weather through uh, Friday into weekend. That high pressure pulls out to our west over the weekend and we try to draw in a cold normally. However, all of that or most of it goes plunging off into Scandinavia and we're just sort of on the periphery of that with high pressure not going far, than, far enough west. However, it does turn very cold much of northern Europe as well. So the cold Nordic, Scandinavian, Baltic, um, you know, northeastern Europe uh, winter continues. Uh, yes, another cold plunge of uh, northerly winds pushing southwards there and uh, trickling down the eastern side of Europe as well, no doubt. The high pressure into the middle of next week is still there, sitting more or less over top of the country. Uh, we just can't quite get rid of it, all the way up to like, um, January 1,050 millibars, just to the west of iron. That could be a record-breaking area of high pressure, if that was to verify, sat more or less over to the west. Because the remarkable thing about this is that this high pressure is basically the same high that set up at the end of August. I'm sure you remember this, at the end of August, um, we had an area of high pressure set up just to our northwest and pulled in cool, cloudy, northeasterly uh, winds. And then the high pressure repositioned in September, brought us a very hot, uh, relatively dry September. Well, it's the same high pressure, really, but it's been knocking around since then. It did get a little bit um, uh, pushed away in October when we had a slightly wetter month. But basically, this area of high pressure has been knocking around very close to the country since the end of August. It's been tremendously persistent area of high pressure. It does make you wonder how long, uh, you know, how much longer this is going to go on for. We're coming up like six months uh, of this high pressure next month, um, knocking around very close to the country. So at some point, we'll have to have a pattern change, I would assume. Uh, so it makes you wonder, doesn't it, what's going to happen when this high pressure finally shifts. But anyway, up to the end of a GFS midnight run, 
basically the high pressure is still in the essentially right at the very end 27th of january high pressure just pull out a little bit to the atlantic allows you know some rather cold and showery northwesterly winds through now what about the six f we know there's been a shift with the six f gfs something a lot colder so let's see what's going on uh this is how uh gfs six f looks on friday at high pressure over top of coach bring loads of dry weather but then as we get into weekend high pressure sort of weakens and splits so some of the high is slipping away to our south and east and another lobe of the high is pushing out into the atlantic and start to move up towards greenland and that starts to pull in this northerly so instead of being on the periphery of the northerly and the northerly going into scandinavia and northern europe actually we get a direct hit from that northerly blast you remember on some member number 11 yesterday that i showed you at the end of yesterday's video um basically the gfs 6 set is operation is doing the same thing but not you, you know not to the same severity of course with your prayer temperature but basically doing the same thing Get the high pressure to Greenland and bring us a direct hit of cold northerly winds. And so we go to the 18th of January. Um, we're properly in it then. We've got high pressure a long way north up to Greenland, Iceland. Truffle low pressure over Scandinavia. But, you know, the high pressure is far enough away from us to allow this proper northerly to uh, dig in. And down comes the minus 10 cells ice firm. We're about, that will bring snow showers, you know, into the country, particularly to northern areas and around coastal areas. But some of those snow showers could get down into the south and then we keep it pretty cold beyond that actually this is 19th of january high pressure not quite sent over greenland but still far enough north and west to still be pulling in those cold northeasterly winds and then we just stay on the cold side of that area of high pressure throughout the gfs 6 and stays uh, you know out in the middle of the atlantic south of greenland still continue to pull in those cold uh northern ears. so right way to the end of the gfs 6 and we stay cold with lots of overnight frost we will have quite a cold ct by that point if that came off i think the ct will be down into the freeze uh, by then, maybe even, to, even into twos, um, you know, because there will be night after night after night of, of widespread frost um, as we go into the final uh, week or so of uh, January. So it's high pressure centred over to our northwest. It's unlikely to verify, but as we saw here, let's just go back to it, as we saw here, not only the operational GFS on doing this, we have seen a shift, certainly in terms of a northerly anyway, um, we have seen a shift within the GFS ensembles uh, for the 6 day sweep uh, to, to colder weather uh, around the 17th to the 19th or 20th of January. Whether that is sustained uh, for the 12 day set, whether they shift that milder again, remains to be seen. Right, so that's all of the GFS output. And by the way, by the end of the GFS 6 day, that does all about to start really Scandinavia. Uh, as well, doesn't it, that high? You would, if you could go on any further, you'd probably expect that high to start drifting up towards Scandinavia, where we have got some uh, ridging that's taking place over there. So a very interesting, quite cold uh, GFS 6 m Unlikely to verify, though. Uh, this is how the GM is doing. If, if you're enjoying the video, please give smash the like button to make sure you sub to the channel. Thank you so much, everybody, for doing that. And drop a comment. Let us know what you think about this of our videos. GM, again, high pressure dominating the weather. Uh, at the end of the week will be frost and fog with that. And then the high pressure pulls out into the Atlantic. And we do open the door to a bit of a northerly uh, with the GEM as well. So uh, there's my 10 as I said, just getting to the northern part of Scotland. However, the difference is between that and like the 6 said GFS, we don't get high pressure centred far enough north. And so we remain just on the periphery of that cold plane. It's much of northern Europe looking very cold. Uh, but we're just, just on the periphery of it. Just going to take a high pressure a little bit further northwestwards, and we'd open the door as the GFS 6 said does. And then the high pressure sort of topples back in as we head up towards the um, uh, days 8, 9, 10, and we go milder with the wind coming back in for the Atlantic around the top of the high. And then the ECM looks like this. Uh, so once more, high pressure dominating uh, over the weekend and into up uh, next week. High pressure has a go at going north. We bring down a big old northerly blast into Scandinavia, but as ever, we're just on the periphery of it. We don't get the high pressure far enough north and west to tap into that cold air. Nevertheless, there will be frost and fog still under this area of high pressure through the early part of next week. But looking at the upper air temperatures, notice how cold it is across most of northern Europe, but we remain on the edge of it, minus five cells ice firm, just off the East Anglian coast there. <laughs> Tuesday next week. So that really is a near miss. And then eventually, similar to the GM, we start bringing the Marder Air in around the top as the high slips south of France. Marder Air begins to come back in around the top of the high from the Atlantic. Although probably still frost and fog in the south 
uh, up to that point, which is the 21st of January. Notably dry, I have to say, with all of these models, um, you know, over the next week or so. So a precipitation forecast based on that ECM run from Tometro.com doesn't show all that much as high pressure will be in control throughout. Um, more or less, a little bit of patchy rain coming and going, but not really much to, to focus on. These are the options on the table. Then the ECM on summer day for day 10, which gets us to the 21st of January from the Icelandic Met Office. 16 members of the ECM on summer have high pressure over and just slightly to the west of the country. Um, so we are so close to pulling in cold air from uh, the north, but, but just on the edges of it, that includes the control and the operation run. 14 with high pressure over country again, something a little bit milder coming in around the top of the high. 13, take the high pressure out to the west and pull in more of the north or northeasterly. And then 8 again with the high pressure away to our west and northwest, and around that we bring in those winds from the north or northeast direction. There are two cold options, the 13 there. And the 8 there, but the majority option, 16 and the 14, that's the milder option at day 10. Of course, the ETL ensembles might follow the GFS ensembles and shift uh, later on. We'll have to see. Uh, in two weeks' time, these are the options that we've got. will get us to the 26th of January. 22 members of the ECM ensemble still anticyclonic. High pressure over top of the country. Not overly cold, but certainly frost and fog will continue with that. 16 with high pressure just to our west, again, reaching into the country, not overly cold, but there could be some frost and fog. And then 13, doing something different, bringing road pressure in off the Atlantic and bringing this flat westerly wind through across the country. That would be unsettled, uh, but relatively mild, wet, windy. Service so reaching finally means the 500 mm bar heights break down to wheat piers. The first wheat pier takes from the 11th to the 17th of January. The coming week has high pressure dominating over the top of the country, just to our west, so uh, mainly dry and uh, plenty of frost and fog for the south anyway. Week 2 is the 18th, 24th of January. High pressure pulls out a little bit further to our west, but still basically keeping things dry and not overly cold. But again, there will be frost and fog possibilities. Week 3 is the 25th of January to the 31st. Low pressure in from the North Atlantic, a little bit of a northwest southeast alignment to wind flow and jet stream as high pressure pulls out into the Atlantic. So that could be a little bit more unsettled and perhaps slightly cooler. And then week 4 looks pretty mild and unsettled. This is the 1st to the 7th of February. First week of February, first week of the last week of the um, first week of the final month of Big Joshua winter, I should say, um, looks like that. Uh, with low pressure north, high pressure to the south, winds in from west, pretty mild, probably quite unsettled though, up in the north. If you enjoy the video, please give smash the like button, make sure you sub to the channel, thank you so much for doing that, and drop a comment and say about this and all of our videos. If you do give us a sub, you'll be able to you'll be able to see future weather content, and don't forget to tell your friends and family to subscribe as well. Thank you so much uh, for doing that. So, yeah, I think the thing we've got to focus on is that northerly. Um, there has been quite a shift within the GFS ensembles. Uh, so, it's possible that um, that northerly has suddenly, within the 6Z uh, ensemble GFS ensembles, you know, the northerly has become a little bit uh, um, more pop. Probable, possible. Um, but again, we're going to wait to see whether this continues with 12s there. I think it might just be a one-off shift, and then they'll shift back to the milder uh, again. Most of the other model output from this morning, as we've established, has us on the periphery of that northerly and takes the northerly into Scandinavia. So the 6Z operation run, if it's just the operation run, then I'll pretty much write it off. But as the ensembles as well, as the operation run have shifted, I've got to, you know, just wait and see what the 12th day uh, does. But in any case, uh, that's where the focus is, I think, for next week. How much of that northerly is going to get into the west of Europe? And then, you know, what happens after that remains to be seen. Right, if you enjoyed the video, then smash that like button. Thank you so much, everybody, uh, for doing that. Tomorrow, we're going to have the uh, 6 a.m. upload. USA forecast, of course, will be another 10 to 14 day as well. Uh, so we'll keep you updated. Uh, but for this video, that's all for now. And thanks for watching.